All right, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Liz Fuller, uh, president of the Southport Historical Society. I want to welcome you. This is our the first night of our three-day celebration of the life of and work of Art Newton. So today would have been his 100th birthday. Wow. Born on August 31st. Uh, 1922, <laughs> the, 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 the century, right? <laughs> um, so what we're going to do in a minute, I'm going to introduce you to Julie, his daughter, and then she's going to talk a little bit, and then um, I will lead you into the next room where we have a few of his original artworks um, set up for you to see. And then, um, we, uh, and Diana Fotonatis is going to be telling you a little bit about those. I do want to caution you, they are on easels. The easels are a little precarious, so if you can give them a bit of space, and we want you to look at them, but don't get too close because they, uh, we're afraid they're going to topple over. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and then uh, when you're, when you're uh, done looking at the art, then um, we'll have you exit out the back. And there'll be an opportunity to buy, um, we have a, a lovely coffee table book that was written by Tommy Harrelson from Southport, um, whose family has collected a lot of uh, Art Newton paintings over the years and he knows a lot about it. And we also have some of his prints for sale, so you'll have the opportunity to see those on your way out. So now I would like to introduce Art Newton's youngest daughter, uh, Julie Newton. Hi, thank you so much for coming out tonight. Welcome to the oldest home in Southport. And I'm sure that's why you're here, just to come into the oldest house in Southport. But my family lived here for a brief handful, maybe 10 years at the most. And that's what I wanted to talk about tonight. So when, um, when Dad came back from New York, you know, they, he had been up there studying and they had their first son and he didn't want to raise a child in New York. He wanted to come back to Southport where he was raised. So he brought his family back down here and started a studio and did what he could to make a living with his photography and painting and whatever he could come up with. They built a house on Cape Fear Drive, which is just a couple miles down the road. With, an art, with a dark room that my mother just loved that house and talked about how wonderful that house was. But about three years after they bought that house, this house became available for rent. And dad said, we have to move down there to the big house. So I remember mom saying, she loved the house on Cape Fear Drive. It was the happiest she ever was until Dad had to live on the waterfront in that drafty old house <laughs> with seven fireplaces. <laughs> so that's what her stories. But um, of course, this is how it looked when we lived here. This was like in probably '58 was when they moved in here, and it looked pretty weathered in those days. There were four bedrooms stacked up this way. It was all very small and, you know, it's a lot different now. They've added some extra rooms on in there and they've changed things around. Um, he had what I thought a long time was his studio it was up on the third floor and our, our family, my cousin, told me, no, it wasn't his studio. That's where he had his dark room. Mm -hmm. So the panel behind you back there is a lot of the portraits that he took he would model he would use the family all the children these are my brothers and sisters and he did a lot of pictures for them that would be in the newspaper and they were picked up in papers and he had little captions to go with them but he would develop his own pictures when they moved here and mom said they paid seventy dollars a month rent and they could hardly make that at that time, he was giving art lessons and charging about $2 an hour for private art lessons, mm -hmm. and he was selling his paintings, but, you know, I guess it was still really hard to make ends meet back in those days. But when they moved in here, my oldest brother was eight, my next brother was five, and my sister was star was almost two when they moved in here. So over the next few years, they raised their family and built their business and lived here. And he did his work upstairs with the paintings, with the port, with the pictures. He did a lot of his painting right down here. He set up the easel <laughs> down here in the living room. Um, my cousin remembers. We came to visit one summer when he was working on the big one that was commissioned for the city hall, and it was right there in the living room where he did a lot of that. But he loved his house on the river and. This is where he lived, and my 
My sister died here when she was just almost five years old. She had mm -hmm. leukemia, but she died here in the house. And then two years later, I was born here. I don't really have many, many memories of living here because my father died when I was 10 months old. Wow. And um, a couple of years later, I guess they decided to sell the house and we had to move, but we only moved to the other corner. So I grew up on this block my whole life. And I'm just thrilled that you are here and it's the dream come true to get to come back into my old homestead and tell the story of the way it was when we were here, even though I don't really remember. <laughs> They don't know what happened. It's kind of a mystery. Wow. But he was too young, but he left a, a lot of works behind, and I'm so glad he captured the, the heart of Southport that he loved so that we'll always yes. know what it was like. Absolutely. Okay, so um, oh. did you and your siblings have his gift, his talent? Um, with a little bit. Together? My oldest brother went to art school, and he did some painting, and my other brother, Dana, did some painting. I, I think my talents, I, I never wanted to put a paintbrush type. you can't compare with that but I'd like to take videos and a ride and you know so I have talents they're just different <laughs> so I we're gonna go into the next room now but I do want to mention uh, I want to make sure that you all know we're, we're doing our day two tomorrow night at the community building it'll be at 630 Julie will be there you can ask her more questions um, and we'll have uh, more of his art and his photos and more about his life and we'll also have cupcakes and music so you're all welcome <laughs> Well, thank you all for joining us tonight. We're going to start and tell you a little bit about the room that we're standing in. The original structure, going back to the 1800s, we believe, ended probably about where that beam stands. Okay. Uh, but this is an original fireplace with the home. When Julie lived here, it was centered in the room. So you have 360 access to it. Um, and an interesting thing, there's a neat little trap door up there, but we think back in the day that probably was a window. And all throughout the room, you're going to see various works of art. These are arts originals. In the corner right there is an unsigned, unfinished portrait of Valley. That's Julie's mom. Um, they met uh, at one of his art shows, believe it or not, and he took her to lunch and proposed. Um, she was not too eager and quick to say yes. He had to wear her down. Um, but he did. She eventually said yes. They lived quite happily ever after. Um, and this portrait here, um, to my right, is Star. That is the, the daughter that passed of childhood leukemia. She was just prior to her fifth birthday. She passed in 1961. Um, I think she was two when they moved into this house. Um, and of course, there were two older brothers who preceded her. Um, now this picture um, to my left, that one is on the banks of the Cape Fear River. It was done in 1959. And that's the view right outside this house. Um, and when you come up close to look, and, and just please again, just to reiterate Liz's point, the easels are a little wobbly, just please be cautious. Um, that's Valley, that who's sitting out on the dock. Mm -hmm. So these are real, this one really depicts everything that was near and dear to him, his wife and the Cape Fear. Um, that far picture, that is Old Baldy, um, one of his favorite subjects. Uh, we have prints outside uh, of some of his other paintings and of Old Baldy. Uh, and Right there as you go into the next room, that's the Hardy Shrimp House that was done in 1954, right before Hurricane Hazel. Uh, it was destroyed in Hurricane Hazel, and as most of you know, most of those shrimp boats that all lined up there, a lot of them landed down on Moore Street. And Julie also talked to us about the Southport Harbor, that portrait that was commissioned by the city. That's the one in the far uh, in the room. It was done in 1960. Um, the original was four by five feet. Wow. So at that time, it was Valley, Valley's favorite. Um, after Art's passing, her eldest son, John, painted a replacement, and he got the original back for his mom. Oh. Mm -hmm. so, those are the pieces that we have here. Um, any questions? Wonderful. Well, please I feel it. Yeah. Oh, no. Do you know how Star got her name? Oh, absolutely. Spot, she <laughs> was named after a passing ship. Um, <laughs> and actually, in the far corner, there's a small photo that this was actually painted from. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, well, feel free, please, take a look at all the art. Um, when you're ready, there's a little gift shop out in the back, and you're welcome to just pass through. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And if you can, don't forget to write a note to the homeowner. Yes, yes. Thank you.